Hey everybody, what is going on? I'm back with a new video here. I finally got a little bit of time to myself now that I am on vacation. Uh, actually, I'm still insanely busy doing stuff, but I'm definitely gonna take some time to do some more videos. Starting with this one today, we have a sweet pickup that we got from Trick or Treat Studios. Some of you might already know what this is, but I definitely wanna get into this today in this unboxing video, as well as some interesting horror news that's going on and uh, some sweet releases as well now that we are getting into the Halloween season. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So first of all, I have to quickly tell you about Gutter Garb's awesome new Halloween 2 releases. Uh, again, I am in no way being sponsored by them or have anything to do with them. I'm just a big fan of their t-shirts and apparel that they are always putting out. And they recently dropped these three new designs of Halloween 2. Check these out. So you have Michael Myers breaking through the glass door and you have a very sweet design that's done by uh, Mauchi T. I believe he goes by on Instagram. Really cool shot with this brilliant red background. I think it looks so sweet. Just completely captured the look in my opinion. As well as this sick Halloween 2 skull pumpkin design that is lit up with leaves around it and everything. It looks so cool. Big fan of that design. I love the way that turned out as well. So those are three new designs that just dropped from Gutter Garbs. I love seeing stuff like this this time of year because you know you are getting into the Halloween season once August hits because everybody just starts an avalanche of releasing very cool Halloween themed stuff right up until the finish line, man. So exciting times for sure. So that is coming up from Gutter Garbs. They are already available now. Very cool designs. I know a lot of you guys are big fans of Halloween too. So by all means, check it out. Awesome designs from Gutter Garbs. Also with some sad news that uh, William Friedkin passed away. He is the famous director of the original Exorcist. Um, yeah, I just I heard about it not too long ago, and uh, yeah, that was sad to hear. Uh, I guess he was uh, 87 years old, so he did live a, a pretty long life, but he gave us the original Exorcist. And, you know, there's all this hype going on about this new Exorcist movie that's going to drop on October 13th, and uh, I recently caught the trailer. I don't know how many of you have, but uh, what did you think of it? I mean, to be honest, when I saw the trailer... I don't know, I, I saw a lot of stuff that I'm kind of used to seeing and everything, and uh, I don't know, I'm a little bit concerned about it. I don't want to give it away if nobody's seen the trailer, I mean, if you want to check it out for yourself. I, I just remember getting to the end of it thinking, okay, well, hmm, you know, like it's, uh, it's not like it's not something that's worth seeing, of course I'm going to see it, but I was hoping it would have more of that really terrifying uh, feel, you know, that the original had, like they were going to really push the boundaries and give you something that was probably going to make you uncomfortable, you know, and this looked, it looked pretty, uh, I guess safe, you could say, maybe that's, maybe that's a good word, um, uh, I don't know, but it's early and it's just a trailer and we have seen enough trailers to know that a lot of times they'll just completely throw you off and they represent very little about what the actual movie is about and sometimes they give away everything and sometimes it's just like is that the same movie so who knows right but my first impression of it was i thought they they, they played it rather safe and uh it didn't look like it was going to be super scary and uh there were some things in there that i thought were a little you know done before and stuff and just kind of uh so I'm trying not to get too worried about it. Like I said, I'm gonna see it no matter what. I mean, I've booked my time off of work and everything, and I'm definitely gonna check it out and do a review. So we will see that when the time comes. So also there was some Scream 7 news that was uh, released not too long ago where they said that uh, Christopher Landon is going to be directing the new Scream 7 film. 
Now, um, I'm not too familiar with his work. I guess he did a movie called Freaky. I never did see that one. Uh, he did Happy Death Day, and that is one that I had not seen until recently. I just watched that uh, a couple days ago after I heard the news because I wanted to sort of see, you know, how he is with his directing and, you know, uh, how that movie did. I know there's a sequel for it as well, and so I, I assumed it was well received, so I thought I'd give it a chance, and I checked it out, and I did enjoy it. I thought it wasn't bad. Um, you know, without giving too much away, I did think it was a little strange by the time it got to the end, um, and they threw in another angle with, uh, shall we say, the, the cupcake. I'll just say that. Uh, I thought that was a little, huh? Like, I don't know if I would have went there with it, but uh, overall, I thought it was a pretty fun movie. And uh, I like the way it was shot. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking he could probably handle a screen movie just fine with regards to the stalking and, you know, just like the chase scenes and whatnot and the cutaways. And it's like, it looked, it looked good. And I thought, yeah, he could probably tackle a screen. Could he not, right? So uh, that's interesting. It'll be nice to see what they do with that film. I don't know when that's going forward with, uh, with the strike on and everything, but uh, I guess we will see what the future um, has to bring for us for Scream 7. So that's interesting. Christopher Landon. So hopefully he does a great job. Okay, so there's also been this other news that's been floating around about A Nightmare on Elm Street and somehow Blumhouse's involvement and how they're going to do a requel and all this. And I heard this and I thought, oh my God, that's crazy, right? Because I am the kind of person who likes the idea of a requel. I've mentioned it before. I think a requel would be awesome for the Scream franchise. Like to literally forget about everything that's happened from part two on and just do a requel off of one. I mean, I thought that franchise would be absolutely perfect for it. You would still have so many great characters. You'd still have Cotton alive. Like, imagine the possibilities there. You could say Stu never died. He's been, he's been in prison all this time. Maybe he gets out. There's an angle. Uh, for God's sakes, Randy's still alive. I mean, Randy, come on. You know how cool that would be? Just to pick up, like, now, all these years later, you know, Stu's out. Something's going on. That'd be kind of cool. I thought. I'm not saying don't carry on with the current series. I like the current series. I think they did a great job. I really enjoyed Scream 6 and it made me like 5 better. I think I've said that to you guys before. But Requel Ideas for me, I, I think uh, it's really cool. Ever since Halloween 2018 did it, I thought, you know, you could do this with a lot of franchises just for fun. And you could keep doing it over time just to keep telling a great story, right? You know, like how many versions of Robin Hood have we had, for example, right? Like, I mean, who's to say we can't do that with A Nightmare on Elm Street or Scream or, you know, Friday the 13th, whatever. So the idea for a requel for A Nightmare on Elm Street, sure, it's intriguing. However, from everything I understand, it is based on complete bullshit. <laughs> Apparently it came from an account that was only created in March. Uh, doesn't really have a lot of insight. There's no like anyone that's confirming any of this information at all and i guess when it dropped uh mike from we watched a movie a channel that i i watch frequently one of my favorites i'm sure many of you know uh mike and jay but mike in particular does a lot of videos and he did one covering this subject and he was flipping out because um you know it wasn't true and so many people were were taking it you know, at face value that, oh, that's what's happening. And he's like, there's no verified anything here that any of that is going on at all. So he was getting kind of annoyed. I saw Jimmy Champagne apparently did a video on it. And uh, I haven't watched it myself, so I really don't know uh, what's going on yet. But it's weird if Jimmy's doing one because he's, you know, he's very reliable. So I was a little surprised to find out just how week the source was uh, from Mike with We Watched a Movie. Actually, I'll put a link to that particular video in the description of this one so you guys can check it out uh, if you want to see. But as far as I know, it's just a BS rumor, guys. That'd be really, really cool. I understand, that, you know, uh, Jason Blum has been trying to get the rights for A Nightmare on Elm Street for a long time. He's said that publicly. And uh, as far as I know, it is still owned by the estate of Wes Craven. You know, um, 
so I'm really not sure what's going to be happening there. But as far as I know, these are totally just completely unsubstantiated rumors and nothing is confirmed at all. So I just wanted to mention that to you guys. But I will put a link to Mike's video uh, for sure. Check it out and, you know, hear his take on it. He can explain it a hell of a lot better than I can. Okay, and as for Spirit Halloween, I've been anxious to go there and uh, none of mine have opened up yet. Uh, none of the two close locations that I usually go to anyway. I understand the one that's on the far south end of town that's pretty far away that I might still try to check out anyway. I understand they are open tomorrow. That's uh, Tuesday, August 8th it'll be. It's Monday here when I'm recording this. And um, yeah, I do want to check them out. They have some pretty cool stuff this year. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the Leatherface uh, stand-up they have. It's pretty cool. Look at this thing. I thought it looks all right. The chainsaw is a nice touch. Uh, I also saw a few other uh, really neat designs they have. So I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of their new animatronics type stuff. Uh, as well as picking up a few other items that I saw that should be available as well. So um, I guess we'll see what happens, but I'll definitely do a little quick walk through here and there on the first one that I get myself uh, into for you guys that I like to do pretty much every year. But uh, yeah, we'll take a look together and see what they have this year. Okay, so time to get into the pickup. I've been sitting on this sucker since Friday this arrived. Um, and like I said, it's late Monday night here now, so it's been here all week and I haven't had a chance to open it, but I've got to check this thing out and see. Um, let's get this open. All right, so again, this is from Trick or Treat Studios, and this is something that they recently got that I saw on Sean Clark's channel. That's uh, Malfunction, of course, the Sean of The Thing With Two Heads podcast he does with Christopher Nelson. Um, I love Sean. Most of the horror community does as well. I mean, he's been around forever and he's done, you know, so many horrors, hollowed grounds. And uh, he's the guy who books all these conventions and uh, is an agent to so many of these wonderful uh, stars we all love. Um, great dude. But, but Sean did a tour of the Trick or Treat Studios main branch and warehouse with the one and only Tommy Lee Wallace the director of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, as well as It from 1990, and of course he did play Michael Myers in several scenes of the original film alongside Nick Castle whenever he was doing stunts. He's most famous for the, um, the smashing through the closet scene when Laurie is crouched down and you see Myers come in, that awesome side shot, that's Tommy, oh yeah. And he also is the one that modified the Shatner masks, sprayed them white and everything to, uh, to get that look. So he is the man. But anyway, they focused on a lot of awesome stuff Trick or Treat Studios has this time of year and new products and stuff. And of course, plenty of Halloween 3 stuff, including this awesome piece that so many of us got. Uh, one in mind, I know uh, Boogeyman Ben recently got one and he did a, a review on his channel. I haven't checked that out yet. I've, like I said, I've been really busy. I have to watch his, but um, of course, this is the same thing here. And I got it because this is also one of the pieces that Tommy Lee Wallace gets a cut of. So I thought that's pretty cool too, but I have to get this out of here. So let's take a look at this thing. <laughs> How awesome is that? Featuring music from the hit film, musical light up. Jolly Jack-O-Lantern, Halloween 3. Oh, and look what else they did for me. They threw in a Halloween original air freshener. I don't have this one either. That's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. That is great. And on the back, they have all these awesome little snakes and spiders, as well as the shamrock on the back there. So, of course, the next question will be, does it come with batteries? I'm guessing no. We will see. All right, here we go. We got batteries in it. Let's check it out. And yes, I wore a Halloween 3 t-shirt for the occasion. In fact, I actually wore a Halloween 3 t-shirt pretty much the last couple of days thinking I was going to shoot this video. So I was going through many Halloween 3 t-shirts. And this is the rotation we're on for today. So it's another nice Tom Atkins, Justin Osborne, Fright Rags. Um, but enough about this shirt, let's check out this pumpkin. So there's two modes, there's steady on, 
There it is. And as you can see, the snakes, spiders, and the shamrock on the back looking exactly like the mask up front. And we have the blinking with the music. Let's check it out. Oh, that's loud. It's blasting. Yeah, it just plays it on a loop. That's loud, man. Wow. Awesome. That's very cool. So, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was going to do the, you know, three more days to Halloween, you know, do the whole kind of thing. But I guess that would be uh, a lot more uh, music they would have to put on these babies for that. But uh, this is still absolutely awesome. I really love it. I'm glad I got it in the collection. So, once again, that's from Trick or Treat Studios. Comes in this nice little collectible box here as well as a sweet air freshener they sent me again from the original Halloween. That's badass. Much appreciated. It's probably vanilla, right? I think they're usually vanilla. No, no, this one is cinnamon scent. Very nice. Anyway, that is from Trick or Treat Studios, so I'm sure they are still available. I imagine they are probably going to sell out, knowing uh, the popularity of this movie, and these are new. And uh, how cool is that to have around at Halloween time? Come on. Awesome. All right, guys, well, that'll pretty much do it for another video. I thank you, as always, for watching. Uh, we are, like I said, getting into the Halloween season, so uh, there's just going to be more and more stuff happening as we get closer to the big day. Everything is uh, real busy. Uh, I'm still in the middle of selling my Jeep. A uh, little bit of complicated stuff going on there, but I'm almost through it. It's just taking up a lot of my time. So I am trying to get through that. I am expecting some more packages here and there to be showing up soon. And of course, take you guys through Spirit Halloween and see what we can find over there. Uh, I'm also working on a, well, it's a video that started as a top 10 slasher movies or my favorite top 10 slasher movies. As you know, I'm a big slasher fan. Uh, and there's a lot of great ones out there. So I thought, why not try to rank them? And man, is it hard. <laughs> Before you know it, I had like 30 plus names that I really enjoyed. And I was like, you know what? We're going to do a top 25 proper slasher movies of all time. So that is what I'm currently working on. My own personal picks as the best slasher movies of all time uh, for me. So I do want to put that together and get everybody's thoughts on what they like or what kind of order they put them in or maybe some that I may have left off my list. But uh, that is something I'm working on that I want to get to you guys uh, while I am off on vacation here. Uh, and like I said, it's been a really hard one for me trying to, uh, to rank all these movies I love so much. But uh, I'm excited for the challenge, and again, I'd love to be talking to you guys about uh, what your favorites are. So I look forward to that coming up real soon. Again, as well as plenty of other little pickups here and there as we get into the Halloween season. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, as always, you guys, and we will see you again real soon for another one. Take care.